All right, here we go. We're ripping. Kobe, Yeah. welcome to the podcast. Pleasure to be here. Start us off, man. Give us just the high level background, who you are, what you're doing in the world. Yeah, I'm a filmmaker and I guess now a content creator. It's super fun, privileged enough to be in the outdoor industry, really, and like film I went from guiding to picking up a camera for the first time in 2017 just taking still images for years and in like middle of 2019 I was like really intrigued by telling more stories so I started just trying to learn how to make a film and decided to kind of like has been my mo in life is just like jump fully into whatever I'm doing like when I wanted to get into guiding I dropped everything, bought a van, moved to Jackson Hole, learned how to ski mountaineer in the Tetons and chase that career, chase that passion for years until I found cameras. And it was kind of eye opening. I was like, oh, I get to do everything that I wanted to do in the mountains, except document it with these crazy athletes, really. And it brought me all over the world. Um, yeah, basically went from guiding to breaking my ankle, couldn't guide anymore, had the skills with the camera. While I was recovering, that was like only photography. So while I was recovering, tried to just learn as much as I could about film and storytelling. And then three months later, went full time into video and had a couple lucky breaks where I had enough editing work so I could keep doing it and keep practicing. And then it was COVID, which kind of just shut down the whole world but I just used it as time to really hone those skills in and ended up making my first documentary which went on to win a few awards got into a bunch of film festivals and then got hired on as a director for a company for a couple years and really that's how it started kind of wow wow a lot of lucky breaks but just like literally going like not having any other options at the time just be like well there's no fallback plan right now this is like Go until it doesn't work anymore. Huh. Wow. So we met at Seattle Bouldering Project. And I remember when you told me what you did, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's what you do? Like, that's like everyone's dream job, right? Is Mm -hmm. adventure photographer, uh, being outdoors. Many of us who have passion for being outside want to find a way to spend more time outside. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have a lot in common. I'm sure we're going to find pretty soon here. But I had I had a similar feeling of, you know, the question is, you have to make money, you have to have a job, but Mm -hmm. how do you align what you're passionate about with that? And that's the sweet spot. Um, And so I want to hear more about like, not only just the mindset that you've built, Mm because you make some awesome content, just not only on like high level, you know, here's how to think about things and, you know, garner motivation, inspiration, but also tactical skills, ways to improve as a storyteller. So I just want to break down and unpack a lot of what you just kind of touched on high level. But uh, first of all, how'd you break your ankle in the backcountry? No, Uh, it was in between guiding trips was just sport climbing one day, Uh, took a really bad lead fall, slammed into the wall broke the ankle and it's kind of like serendipitous though. Like I already had like going into that season, I was like, this is probably going to be my last season because if you get hurt, you're kind of screwed Mm -hmm. month into the season, broke my ankle, couldn't guide anymore. And I was like, well, I guess I was like forced, basically being forced to change careers and reevaluate how you've been living your life. Yeah. But it kind of all started just like chasing your pass- passions for years. And I find if you go, basically, if you put all your eggs in the basket or like really go in with the mindset of like, I'm going to make this work, not half ass going into it, but like fully go into whatever you're doing, you're more likely to make it actually work. And it might not be a smooth ride. Like it's going to have ups and downs for sure. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. But if you're like, no, this is what I really want to do. And you actually take the actions and take the steps for it, like can make anything happen really. I, 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 uh, I'm excited to hear more, man. That's, uh, you're already giving me chills. So this is great. Um, you've recently made the transition and I, I just want to hone in on the way you introduced yourself. You said, I guess now content creator. So yeah, you are not just going like, 
you know, the way you said it is like you're, you're humble, but you are going full on into making content. And if anyone's watching this, pull up your Instagram account and just give a look at some of the quality of the content, the breadth of what you're making. Uh, what's the, talk to me a little bit about why you're making this transition from just being a hired gun working in, sounds like you worked for another outdoor film production company Mm -hmm. you started your own but now you're bringing that into actually building a personal brand and why you value that what's what's important about that just talk in general um about what what you're doing there yeah so for years i was just working for a different company making content for outdoor companies a lot of ski areas a lot of outdoor brands a lot of tourism companies and our tourism destinations and it's really fun and you're making a lot of content and, but you don't really have the energy or it almost seems like too much effort to make your own content. And when you're working for somebody else, there's not really the motivation. At least I didn't have the motivation to make my own content on top of a making more con- than full-time job. Yeah. You know, you're working more, long days. Mm-hmm. You don't have the energy, you know? No, especially when yeah. you're like working pretty much every day of the week, either shooting or editing or traveling for these shoots. You're just, don't have the energy to keep keep it up Mm -hmm. and then make your own content on top of that and when I left and started my own company I for the first pretty much the first year I didn't make my own content either which is kind of shooting myself in the foot because that's really how you get your name out there Um, but just spent all the effort trying to make the clients work as good as possible didn't have the system set up to make my own content or like what I wanted to make it about it was always something in the back of my mind since basically I got into film was wanting to start like a YouTube channel and didn't really know what I wanted to make it on. I knew I wanted to make my own content eventually, but I was like, ah, don't really know what I want to do it on. Didn't think I had much to say, but after five years of doing it professionally, I felt like I had, I finally reached a point where I was like, oh, I now have the skills that I wish I would have had when I started or these very specific mindset or technical skill set that I wish I would have known five years ago when I was starting Mm. and had like one place or one resource that I could have been like, oh, for this, this is what you do. Cause there's just not as much in the outdoor adventure space. It seems like. Yeah. Um, so a bit of a black box. Yeah. And it's like so much of it's trial and error Mm -hmm. and yeah, I just kind of got to a point where I was like, no, I need, I think this is the time, like there's never going to be the right time to do it or like jump into something new. And I was like, I already have the skill set and know how to make the content. But now it's like, oh, how do I overcome being scared of being in front of the camera and just like do it? Mm. And you get to a point where it's like, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't so, that the truth, dude? So you just like, yeah. just do it. And yeah. Like, nobody's yeah. going to watch it at first. <laughs> I feel like well nobody's said. still watching right now, but yeah. it's like, yeah got to the point where I was just like, I couldn't not do it anymore. I was like, the longer I wait, it's just not going to ever happen. Yeah. And there's never going to be the right time. You just kind of have to make the time and make it happen. Yeah. And that's one of the mindsets that I've realized is like, if you really want to have something happen in your life, like you'll make the time for it. If you don't really want to, you'll always make excuses. It'll always be something that Mm -hmm. holds you back or is like, nah, it's not really the thing doesn't really matter what it is in life like if you really want it you'll find the time we all have 24 hours in the day yep yeah and many people are doing a lot of stuff so i'm like i've got no excuses yeah 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 um that really hits home for sure uh there's those things that just burn inside of you over time Mm -hmm. and you just know like deep down you're selling yourself short by not just, and the hardest part, I was just actually journaling about this last night Mm because I wrote my first Bitcoin related article. I want to write and create more on, on the Mm -hmm. topic of Bitcoin and finance and just living life. And that's why I started this podcast up. And I realized like the, and I had like, I was kind of just reflecting on how good it feels to have one article done. Like Mm -hmm. it's, in my head, I was like, dude, I need six, I need five, six, eight articles so my website looks full and the web page doesn't look dumb mm-hmm. with just one article. And I, I wrote one article about my 
a bike tour trip that I did this summer, Mm -hmm. rode my bike around the Olympic Peninsula, just enjoyed writing it. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to challenge myself to write something. Um, you know, I just think about who am I writing this for finished it. And that zero to one friction from like having nothing to just having your foot, you're in, you have a toe in the game. You're like Mm -hmm. not on the sidelines anymore. Feels so damn good. Oh my gosh. And, uh, I'm sure once you get to like level seven, which maybe you can comment on, cause like your stuff is like like really high level, uh, just the, the cinematography, the storytelling content's amazing. I want to hear about like how you create, uh, because I'm sure like once you get to higher levels and you actually are being super critical about like the level of content, am I adding value? You can almost, uh, you know, probably hit like a plateau, like you do in climbing, right? You know, mm-hmm. you just came in today. You were telling me that you just broke a big plateau, which if you ever climb, we all hit those plateaus mm-hmm. and it's not just in climbing, it's in all areas of life, not to get too, you know, yeah, woo woo, but, uh, yeah, man. Uh, like what, I guess the question is like now you're in it, you're creating content mm-hmm. on a daily basis. Highly recommend if you want to improve your content, check out what you're creating. Um, if you just want to improve your mindset, it doesn't necessarily have to be content, but anyone running a business, wanting to build a personal brand, um, all the above can get a ton of value out of what you're putting on Instagram. Are you just doing Instagram? You mentioned YouTube as well. I haven't gotten to YouTube yet. I have like a couple videos up there. Uh They're just way too much work Uh at the moment. And Uh sorry to go back your documentary. What was it about? I haven't watched it. Unfortunately, I should have. It's actually probably actually not available to watch right now. Okay. So it's still in the the film stuff, film circuits and film circuits. It's Uh like, yeah, it's kind of in the mix still. Okay. okay. Um, nice. Yeah, it's about this guy that tried to, who's done a lot of really hard endurance events. Okay. And him trying to do a solo self-contained Badwater 146. Oh, wow. In Death Valley. For wow. everybody that doesn't know, like yeah. Badwater race is, you ha- it's typically in July or August, so the hottest months of the year. It's this ultra marathon, 135 miles from Badwater, which is the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere to whitney portal so that's like the official race so this guy did that twice finished it it's like that's not hard enough i'm gonna do a double bad water so you do that then you add another 12 or 11 miles to the summit of mount whitney so you go from the lowest point in the western hemisphere to the highest point in the the double bad water and then you go all the way back to the start unreal and then he's like Four years later, he's like, oh, that still wasn't enough. I'm going to do that twice. So like it was like two weeks straight of every single day getting up and starting where you left off and just mm-hmm. going. So all the way there, I don't, I don't even know how many. What's 146 miles times, times two four. times four, like 600 <laughs> miles. Yeah. 600. And like 20,000 elevation or something like that. Yeah, right? it's crazy. You go over yeah. like three mountain passes. Because Death Valley is below zero elevation at the bottom there. I think it's negative 282 feet ridiculous yeah like so he's doing he's doing forty thousand elevation and 600 miles of running in the most hardest yeah so he was doing all that and those are all self unsupported those ones you do have support okay Okay. so then this one was like the most hardcore version of it is solo self-contained where you can't you basically have to start with everything you're going to have for the whole time you can't get even artificial shade like you couldn't get shade from a building you can't stop along the way and get food. You have to have everything with you the whole time. So he has like Whoa. a 250 pound cart Whoa. with all his food, water, ice to keep everything cold because it was super hot. And then trying to go do this and then it ended up being like a record heat weekend that weekend. So like all these things came together to just like make it at this brutal event or brutal like thing to try. And that's what it's about. And so you documented that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how do you start to, cause when I got into shooting outdoors, the biggest challenge I had was how do I would make videos with me and my buddies like mountain biking or something, mm-hmm. but we get like, you know, a couple feet off the ground, like an inch off the ground on our big jumps, you yeah. know? And like, I see some of the stuff you're filming. Uh, I followed one of the guys that you were filming with. You've been filming with a bunch, but these guys are like pro mountain bikers, you know, how yeah. did you start to, uh, build connections and start to surround yourself with these elite athletes? Kind of all came through like crystal mountain. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's like all through the outdoor industry. Like I started off just filming friends that were, mountain bikers, climbers, ice climbers, skiers, started off just filming friends doing that. That led to me getting hired by a company 
and doing all the content for Crystal Mountain and Big Sky. And then when you're there, you just have these either professional athletes or ambassadors that you're filming with on a daily basis. So that kind of builds up your whole network. When I moved to Washington, that was my entire network was just these people. And then they all have friends and they all do different sports and kind of just all builds upon each other. So like my best friends in the area are either photographers or filmmakers or they're the athletes that are, that we're filming with. So it's wild too, because you have to physically keep up with them, right? Yeah. And hold the camera gear. You almost have to be in better shape than them. I'm sure like there's guys, it's just ridiculous, but like, how do you train? How do you think about like your level of fitness? Like, are you, you know, consciously training or is just your job so demanding that you build up, uh, naturally through what you're doing? Yeah, I would say it comes, I come from a mountain guide background. So like already had the base level fitness of carrying a heavy pack on a regular basis. I was a guy in a mountain Shasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're like high elevation. You're going up to a 14 er typically one to three times a week, every week in the summer. Um, and then on your off days, you're going to climb. Like that's when you can really get after it. Cause you're in like such good shape or like, Oh, now I can go do my own objectives Mm -hmm. and do like these crazy big days or Mm -hmm. crazy big objectives. And then when you're filming on a regular basis, you just typically have like a 35 to 50 pound pack on and you're skiing or climbing all the time with that already, Mm. typically with these athletes. So you're just like maintain this base level fitness that Mm. kind of keeps you, lets you keep up a little bit, Mm. but it's more of just like doing it so often that you're used to it. Wow. That's but, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always say like, you never know what you're training for. Like uh, oh. when I was younger, I'd be like, man, like I'm training. So like one day when I'm like filming with these pro athletes, I can keep up, you know? Um, but you never know. You know? I think like, just keeping the base level yeah, fitness. Yeah. And you have to love high. it too. You can't be training just, it can't be a drain. Like, no. And I, I honestly yeah. like don't train uh-huh. ever for anything. I yeah. just, you just do the life. activities a lot. Um, which is now like trail running or running almost every day. Wow. Climbing three to four times a week in the winter, skiing a bunch. Very cool. Uh, Yeah. Very cool. Doing the activities a lot. (laughs) Wow. So let's get into some tactics on, on how to tell better stories, how to make Mm -hmm. better videos. Uh, I had a list of a couple things that I saw on your social media, but just what are some of the, um, messages that you've put out that really resonated with people and are clearly adding value? I think just having a game plan, like going into something with an intention, having an idea of what you want the outcome to be. If you just go in to film, to film content, it's probably going to be kind of mediocre because you just don't have anything you're even striving for. Um, so really having intention in whatever you're doing So then you can actually capture that. If you are just filming willy nilly and trying to put it together in the edit, it typically doesn't come together. And then you also are pulling out your hair because you're like shooting yourself in the foot the whole time. I'm nodding because I have, I learned that the hard way. Yeah. And, and to tie it into what you were saying earlier of like why you're bringing, like why you're doing what you're doing is like, you wished you learned some of this stuff earlier. Mm -hmm. I used to always ask people like, if you could give one piece of advice to your 18 year old self or 15 year old self, like what would you tell them? And, uh, you know, part of it is like, you have to learn things on your own through experience. But part of it is we now live in a world where you have access through your phone, through podcasting. In my experience, podcasting, I've learned more through podcasting than I ever learned in school. And also oh, I'm, for sure. I'm self-taught as well in like the creative yeah. space. I studied business. I was, I did not identify as creative. Mm-hmm. I have told this story many times, but I was in a class, a business class, uh, my junior year. And the teacher said, raise your hand. If you think that you are, or if you identify as creative, not one kid in 30, 40 kids raised their hand. Seriously? Wild, right? And then fast forward uh, to working with Chase Jarvis and Creative Live and being surrounded by creatives and entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. every day. I was like, oh my goodness, like Chase hammers it in. We are all creative. We are born Mm -hmm. creative. We create every single day. We're creative machines, you know? Mm -hmm. So to think that somehow along the way of my journey through this world that 
uh, the fact that I'm a creative person was beaten out of me and I was tr- tricked to be honest with you to yeah. think that I'm, I'm a business thinker and I'm a logic strategy, <laughs> critical thinker, but I'm not creative is absurd. So, um, obviously you, you use creativity in, mm-hmm. in how you navigate business situations, how you market everything, everything all of life, how you make really. meals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had to use a little creativity last night making cookies, you know? Um, but baking is a little bit more of a science. Let me not go down that rabbit hole, but, um, <laughs> So favorite stories from travel and production, uh, oh tell gosh. me, tell me, you know, harrowing story, uh, you know, something that was fulfilling, you know, have you ever been in a life or death situation, um, avalanche situation, anything like that rescue situation? Yeah. Um, fortunately yeah, a couple of rescue situations, mm-hmm. uh, last year in Japan filming for, yeah, filming skiing in the back country, mm. had an athlete have a really bad accident and mm. luckily, a few of us are first responders and we're able to get him out there get him out of there safely. And Jeez. yeah, it turns like you're having a great time, having a great time, something bad happens and it's like flip of a switch and you're just like full on rescue mode. And luckily we're all super comfortable in those environments. So mm-hmm. we don't have to think about like the little things. It's more just like, how do we get this point? person from there A to B, like yeah. how do we get them here to the road to get them an ambulance? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like having those base level systems mm-hmm. dialed. So you don't have to be thinking of like, Oh, how do I switch over to ski mode? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, as far as like crazy good, what, I mean, what happened? Like any de- like, did he just fall, hit a rock a tree? Just like, uh, hit a tree, like hit a tree flying, like, 60 feet and oh. hit a tree. That's yeah. I yeah. Mean, that could be life ending. Right. I mean, there's oh, yeah. six inches to the left, Jeez. probably dead. Jeez. Six inches to the right and probably would have been fine. Wow. Wow. And so how I want to know, like, how did you how? cause I can only imagine how do you physically move a human who's injured that much in that environment? Like, did you have a sled or did you carry them? Like, how did we, you, yeah, luckily they were able to like kind of stand up a uh-huh. little bit. Uh-huh. Um, definitely not walking, mm-hmm. but it was his brother and I basically grabbed his arms over our shoulders, mm-hmm. lifted him up, and then we skied him down to where it was flat. Mm-hmm. And then we had two people with verts on, and they took him from like they took over, held him up, and we're just like walking him out. Mm-hmm. And his brother and I were with our skis padding down a trail. Okay. And then it got kind of tricky getting up to the road because it's like steep and there's Mm -hmm. all these trees and it's just like a matter of like basically like handing him off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes, dude. And luckily we were like on the way out and like close, close ish to the road, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. it was, uh, yeah, pretty full on. Uh, that is full on. You, you said there was another one coming to mind that you were about to get into before I cut you off. Um, nothing as far as like filming Mm -hmm. in bad situations like that but just like guiding Mm -hmm. where you Mm -hmm. have like you're up there so often you're bound to see something and just yeah seeing people like take huge falls down big big volcanoes like tomahawking for like 1500 feet (laughs) wow so my friend uh i made a film called still skiing um i have two very good friends who are crystal they're at crystal, whatever, hundred days a year. They ski mm-hmm. at crystal. They're there every day. They coach and they coach a uh, free ride at crystal. Yeah. One of my buddies is going to work in the park this winter. Um, and the girlfriend, her name's Marita, uh, made a film about the two of them and mm-hmm. how they just 52 weeks out of the year, 52 weekends, they are outside skiing. They ski, you know, they do the turns all year thing. They're oh, just nice. like as diehard skiers as mm-hmm. you can possibly imagine. Um, and Marita was coming around the front side of the King, um, mm-hmm. and was in a no fall zone, clipped a ski, tomahawked down the entire thing over cliffs, smashed her helmet into seven pieces, Oh my God. bad concussion, blew her knee up, um, was in the hospital. Like just the whole thing was, was terrible. So I made a film about her recovery coming mm-hmm. back, um, 
by the way, she was skiing. Like she got on skis like three weeks after surgery. She's just like, I'm not going to miss a month of turns all year. Um, so I know like how serious like that, dude, that tomahawking for a thousand feet or something like that, like the amount of damage that the body is taking. Oh my gosh. Uh, You see these videos on Instagram all the time now. Maybe your feed's a little bit less, you know, gnarly. I don't know. I'm, I have, I just see like messed up stuff all the time. And like you watch a guy like at rampage or somewhere like fall and, and you just can't even fathom like how much force, like if you fall off like a 50 foot drop on a mountain bike and you just fall and just get launched off the bike, like it's like life, life altering injuries, you know? And these athletes, they know what they're getting into and they Mm -hmm. push to the absolute limit all the time. Do you Mm -hmm. ever have to, like, is there even, even thinking about like watching free solo, like, is there ever a dilemma, ethical dilemma? You're filming someone who's about to go try something that is potentially very dangerous. Like yeah. they know what they're doing. You're not forcing them to do it. You're there to document, mm-hmm. but like, talk to me about how you think about navigating, um, just risk in, in these environments. Managing risk. I think it really all comes down to the athletes and what their comfort level is. And as somebody that's documenting it, not putting any pressure either way, like pressure for them to do something or like they need to perform right now. Uh, Just, yeah, try to let the athletes kind of pick and choose what risk tolerance they have. But as somebody documenting it, it can get really scary sometimes. Like I remember filming this speed wing flyer, like skiing with a speed wing in the North Cascades. And he's going through this gully are like going to be going through the gully. So I'm posted up on the top of the gully and seeing him fly full speed, do like a corkscrew into the gully or not like a full corkscrew, but like a huge bank turn into the gully. And he's only, his skis are like maybe five feet from the wall. And I don't know how fast he's going, but he's going like full speed. Skis are five feet from the wall, like one little mess up. And you're just going to watch your friend hit a wall. Like you're just like, you know, they're good and they're skilled, but you're like, it's not a lot of margin for error right there. Like, right. Right. Uh, do you think Red Bull and social media puts unnecessary pressure on athletes? I think ultimately it comes down to the athlete, like what their risk tolerance is Mm -hmm. You hear Like these interviews with Shane McConkie from back in the day. And it's like, no, this is my job. This is what I'm getting paid for. So I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves, but yeah, maybe there's, I mean, I'm sure there's pressure from the sponsors on it, but hopefully not anything else that is like putting them in their peril, putting them in peril that they wouldn't do otherwise. Sure. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I really appreciated about Alex Honnold and Free Solo. Like he, he went up, he, he was attempting to Free Solo El Cap mm-hmm. and he went up a little bit and he said, I'm not feeling it. And he came back down. The whole film crew was there and you don't really understand if you're like a normal person, how much effort and money is spent to bring Mm -hmm. that whole crew out. You've got, I don't know, 20 people all getting paid thousand plus dollars a day. Probably, you know, the, the budget of the film is potentially at risk and Mm -hmm. you know, the pressure and the stress and just, uh, I think they had a unique dynamic between Jimmy Chai and and Alex that they trusted each other and they were like okay we're gonna you know this guy's doing something that's that's the unique example right because he's he's truly doing something that's like uh it's just mind-blowing how how Mm -hmm. much risk he's taking on and and the the feat that he's going for um I heard a great piece of advice on a plane one time (laughs) This guy told me, if you're not getting paid to ride like a pro, don't try to ride like a pro. So like for that us, for great us people, advice. isn't yeah. that great? Like yeah. I think about that all the time. Like I see all of these people that are like just local rippers. Right. And I'm like, you guys are taking so much risk and like, this is not your job. Right. I understand. You, you have like another fun, job like, that you won't be able to do if you let your like. Yeah. Or like the yeah. whole rest of your life. Like right. so much. Like I think everybody has a lot of value that they can bring to the world. Mm-hmm. And you're like how worth it is it to do this risky activity? Yep. Yep. Like, I don't know. I think it's just a way I live life is like try to calculate, like how much risk am I willing to take? Like, is this worth it? And I remember when I first got into like ski mountaineering and guiding, like having a lot higher risk tolerance than I do now of like, 
oh yeah, I will go ski tons of like all these no fall zone lines all the time. And you're just getting, you're just getting numb to it. Like you're so used to it. Mm -hmm. And looking back on it and being like, what the hell was I doing? Like, yeah, like, yeah, it's fun. But there's also a lot of other things that are fun that aren't going to put me in, like, have me at risk of dying yeah. doing it. Yeah. And there's something about us guys that we just want to just, I remember mm -hmm. when I got into mountain biking, I went to Duthie Hill. You ride over Duthie Hill. Yeah. You live out there. So I would, every time I went to Duthie Hill, my goal was to do a feature that I had never done before. So it was constantly, the improvement was happening too fast, right? So my ambition was farther it was it was pushing me too far than my skill level like i was still a newbie i didn't have the control i didn't have the hours on the bike i just got into mountain biking i went from being uncomfortable with like a 12 inch curb drop to like dropping off planks of their above my head and stuff like that so eventually like you know everyone eats shit and you know i sprained my elbow hit my head on the ground i'm just like Dude, it's not worth it. Yeah, especially the head injuries. Um, just your brain's the most important thing. Like yeah. you can you can still live a decent life if you have a broken leg or you know, a little limp or something. But if your brain goes, then yeah, so yeah, you're kind of done. Yeah, yeah. it's is, this is a dark conversation, but it's 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 the reality of mm -hmm. of what you're doing out there. And so um, yeah, I mean, what uh, what are you making now? Like, what's the next project? What's, uh, what's something you're excited about? Like, talk to me about, are you doing another film? Are you, are you doubling down on your own, your own stuff? Obviously. Yeah. Um, definitely doubling ski down season coming around. Yeah. Um, mostly as far as work wise goes, a lot of tourism work actually, oh, cool. uh, did a few little mini documentaries in the last year. And, honestly realized like recently that I'm like, they just don't pay the bills as well. <laughs> so I'd rather, <laughs> yeah do the jobs that pay well, that are super fun to shoot. Like every one of the tourism jobs is just like a blast to do. You get to basically go places, do the most fun activities, help them out a lot. Um, yeah. You're providing a lot of value. They're super fun to do. And then they give you enough free time that you can go do whatever you want. So currently that is making a lot of content for myself. Um, a lot of content for my personal brand, which is all aimed at helping basically myself five years ago or people that are in a very similar situation, like providing as much value to them as possible. So trying to give back in that way. Yeah. But the ultimate goal is to, once I have all those systems and that kind of going is to start making my own films again, like self fund my own projects, my own storytelling on YouTube. So cool. yeah, go from like, yeah. instead of trying to do that for the main job, yeah. like have the main job making the money and then self fund the stories that I really want to tell that are going to make a difference or stories that I think just are really worth telling in general. I really like that. I think um, there's two things. The leverage in being not just a hired gun, but a partner or the person who's doing the creating, like not only is it, in my opinion, more fulfilling than working for somebody else. It's fun to work for somebody else. But the other side of it is like, it doesn't have to be black or white. It's not like you have to do a hundred percent, uh, just to have to grind for somebody else and just always be the contract employee. Mm -hmm. You can be the contract employee for X amount of hours per week. Mm -hmm. And then you can go be your own boss and be the, the head honcho of your own little ecosystem for the other hours. It's a beautiful balance, right? Like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I love trying to, and it, fluxes. Um, but maybe, uh, let's get into some of the, like more, like one thing I want to ask you about is, uh, the, like, I have a couple things I wrote down here. Um, but just stuff that you've shared on social media, maybe just like p unpacking it a little bit more let's hop, before we hop yeah. into that. Yeah. I have a thing with that as far as like the work balance versus sure. like personal content creation yeah, yeah, yeah. balance. I think that's really good. I think that's especially if you're trying to make a living at this and like have this be your career, like you need to have something that's bringing in money. And I think the client work is super fun, super fulfilling. You're helping them out, like especially for providing a lot of value for them. Yeah. Like you're providing value to the client. You're also providing value to any of your employees or people that you're hiring on. Like you're just adding a lot of value to the world in that regard. With that, you typically don't have the final say in that. So like storytelling pieces for clients, like you don't typically have the final say and you might have a lot of say in like what that story is 
but it might not be exactly the message you want to be portraying because there's typically some element that's getting pulled either way versus if you're making it for yourself, you can tell the story that you really want to tell and that resonates with you the most. The other aspect of that is client work is great, pays the bills, but again, you don't have the final say and having an outlet like a personal brand or your own content that you can just do whatever you want is like what recharges me. Like that's where I'm able to do, like I can have an idea and then I can just go do it. I don't have to get permission from the client to do it. I don't need to see if it fits into this bigger vision. It's just like, oh, I have an idea of like something that I think would be cool. And you get to go do that. And then at the end of the day, usually usually you learn something, which is awesome. Second of all, you kind of scratch that creative itch over like, oh, wow, like that was awesome. Or you get to like in my situation of like teaching these concepts is like, I just hope that I can help one person. That's Amen, like, dude. Amen. Isn't that in, like, a, situ- in yeah. a situation that I was in or like, yeah. Like when I learned something that was like life-changing, being like, oh, wow, like that one little thing completely changed the arc of my life. Like, why not share that? It's when you reframe from uh, the goal of what you're putting out is to uh, have a hundred million followers or like a hundred thousand followers to, oh no, I just want one person to reach mm-hmm. out and say, like, have you gotten, is there someone that comes to mind? You get a DM from somebody who's like, dude, you shared something with me. I applied it and it worked or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I don't have a specific one, but mm-hmm. I usually I kind of like bi-weekly. Uh-huh. I had a friend, frame, uh, like people saying stuff like that. Yeah. From early in my podcasting days, I've had two different podcasts over the years. This is number three. Uh, and one of my buddies reached out. He goes, dude, I quit my job after listening to this one episode you did. I was like, well, bro, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't necessarily want that, but he's like, no, it's the best thing ever Mm -hmm. uh, changed my life. And I was like the amount of, uh, just fuel that got added to my tank just Mm -hmm. by that one message. So yeah, I, I, uh, I always try and blow wind in other people's sales. I got a buddy right now comes to mind who's starting a fitness channel. Mm -hmm. He's been putting in the work. He's doing calisthenics. He's doing handstands, all types of stuff went from complete zero to like, the guy's a beast, like doing muscle yeah. ups and handstands. And I'm like, man, I'm just going to like post about this guy. And hopefully some of my people go check him out. Cause like, there's yeah. so many people out there like yourself that are mm-hmm. just like on that early, uh, curve, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, if you stick with it, I'm sure, you know, we'll have this conversation again in a year and I'll be saying, well, what's the, what's the, you know, acceleration been like, and how is it yeah. to have like more eyes on your work and things like that? Um, very cool. What is it that makes, a uh, powerful story. Powerful story. I think, yeah, it really comes down to like three elements. Like you have to have a character that wants something and then like what challenge are they overcoming? Like what's stopping them from getting that? I personally love like a journey is yeah, like yeah. The, the classic story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is like, oh yeah, you have somebody, something happened. They want some outcome. And then it's like, what happens to for them to get it? Like, what's the end outcome? It can't be like something that's guaranteed either. Like, if it's guaranteed, there's not really a story. Yeah. It's like, person wants something, something gets in their way, what's the end result after? Like, three elements, really. What's a film or documentary that does that really well, in your view? That I made, or? that you Not that you made, that, that you've watched one of your favorites, maybe. I do like Free Solo a lot. Free Solo is good. Free Solo made my palms sweat watching it, even when you know that he makes it. Like, you're like... Dude, I'm th- my palms are sweating just thinking about terrifying. it. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it in a theater full of people uh, in Banff, what yeah. I, I mentioned, and uh, people are cheering, hooting and hollering. It was such a wild mm-hmm. vibe. Uh, it was, yeah, man, that film is something else. Don Wall as well. This happened to be two of the best climbing films ever get released the same year. Yeah. It's kind of the, you know, unfortunate for, for the two of them. Mm-hmm. Well, not unfortunate, but just, I guess, part of the game. Would have been nice if they staggered those, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I think there's just like, there's so many films like that. Yeah, um, yeah. One that I just watched recently for the first time ever, which is just the animated film, Spirited Away. And I was like, this is freaking amazing. Just oh, like. really? Never heard of it. Yeah. Same. Spirited away. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Um, Into the Void is another one. It's old yeah. school, but classic. Uh, Meru is another one that I've seen that's like yeah, freaking mind blowing. Uh, you ever been over there to Nepal in the Himalayas? Never, never. Yeah, have you? you have, do you have desire to? Yeah, it'd be cool to go over there. I don't really want to climb. I have no desire to do like a high yeah. altitude peak. Like yeah. Denali was enough. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was like, what? Uh, what are some destinations that you would love to go and visit and travel to? Patagonia for sure. Okay, rock climb. Yeah, yeah. cool. Love to climb Fitzroy at some point. But okay, yeah, that's like way down the down the line. Down Something the line. that's like yeah, way different aspect of climbing that. Yeah, want to get better at, but. Mm -hmm. It's not a top priority right now. Mm -hmm. And like we were talking about earlier, it's like you can say whatever you want really, but it's like, what do your actions say? Like, what are you doing? Like that speaks more than anything, like of what you actually want to do. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, doing the work versus waiting for motivation. Oh man. Action creates clarity. Like you can't just, yeah, that's how you get motivated by right. just doing the work. Right. It's so the opposite. Then you don't wait for the motivation to do the work. No, you do the work and do then the you work, get motivated. Find the motivation while you're doing the work. Yeah. Same for when I ride my bike. I'm like, I don't necessarily want to go out in this cold weather these days. Like it's cold. But as soon as you're out there, you're like, here we, we are. To do it after this now I'm podcast. pedaling harder. Yeah. yeah. Like, I rode up Tiger Mountain last night, you know. Gonna go run up Cougar right after this. <laughs> like, Sweet. We'll we'll have to go run at Cougar. I yeah. I uh, I go over and I I ride my mountain bike on those trails and sometimes get yelled at. But um yeah, uh, but definitely like that's literally what it says like above my desk. It sick. says it's like a photo of Denali where you're going across this like 11 mile long glacier and it's just two people in this like one sunny patch in the middle of it. Uh -huh. And the whole time you're just suffering. Like it's just like annoying. You have like a 50 or 60 pound pack on. You have a 50 pound sled behind you. Uh -huh. Like none of it's like enjoyable. It's not like type one fun. You're just like trudging along for hours. Um, and it just says do the work. And it's like as my motivation, like get up, you just go you'll figure out the motivation later mm. or you get motivated by like the progress you're making not by like oh yeah motivated to do work today i really like that i really like having a like a go-to motto mm -hmm. uh kind of depending on the season of life that you're in mm -hmm. i've had a couple over the years it used to be uh stay the course just yeah. stay the course kyle you know uh and now it's uh, trust the process it's trust the process yeah, yeah. Right now, well, I, I'm not super subscribed to this one, but it's waste no time. Just yeah. don't waste time, you know. Um, time is so precious, man. It's the one it's resource like, that we all have, can't get more of. You no, can be it's as, the most yeah. valuable resource you have. Yeah. Like money comes and goes. You can't get back time. Like Yeah, you can make more money. Yeah, mm -hmm. cannot make more time. Um, I want to get into how to build a system to be successful making content. So... Ooh. How, first of all, what are some ways to start before I ask you, what are all the tools you use? Because I know you do have a bit of a complex, I mean, I don't, it seems like it's a complex system. You got several different notes, apps, insp ways to capture inspiration. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you use a project management type of software or anything like that. You also just freaking make ideas and just shoot them and go and run and yeah. gun. That works too. Um, but what are some just entry, some things just to kind of get started instead of, instead of it just being so like throwing crap at the wall? Like what are some things you'd recommend? I think just trying to keep it honestly as simple as possible. Like I really try to systematize every aspect of my life because that's just how my brain works. Um, but as far as like making content, all you really need to do is have an idea. You can write it down wherever. Like I have a physical notebook that I journal in every day. Um, I now have a, that I just created like two weeks ago, like a content planning thing in my notion, which I have a notion dashboard. Okay. So I literally just like write down any idea I have, throw it into there and then I'll like just outline it. Like, okay, what are the main points of this? So like keep it up very simple as far as camera goes, like whatever camera that is as frictionless to you as possible. That can be an iPhone. The new iPhones are absolutely insane like shoot it like you can just plug in an ssd and shoot pro res 422 10 bit footage right to your iphone like it looks amazing yeah. it looks Which, as like good some as of these cameras we're using here don't shoot 10 bit you know it looks like yeah we're not even shooting 10 bit even on the fx3 so great yeah like <laughs> honestly like it looks amazing like wow. i would use that yeah all the time if i didn't have my sony already uh -huh. and then having some sort of system for editing whether that's like for me, it's typically 
cut down the audio, like cut down whatever the voiceover is Mm -hmm. first. If I'm going to have a voiceover, like cut that down, lay that out, put a song underneath that, lay it out over the song. So you like have the pacing done Mm -hmm. and then you just throw B roll over it. That's a good, that's a very simple. Yeah. It's It's just clicks. I always say it's just clicks. mm -hmm. Just do the clicks, you know? And that's like what I had is like trust the process before it was like, especially on bigger projects because yeah. there's so Oof. like each part has like a ton of little steps yep. and the first cuts are always going to just be horrible. Like you're like, have all this planned. You have it all laid out already. And you're like, Oh, it's going to be great. And then you watch and you're like, wow, that sucks. Yeah. But then you just revise it, go through, keep making it a little better each time. And then at the end you like have something that's hopefully good. <laughs> Does, does the editing process ever get, uh, I mean, it gets more, it gets faster and more efficient, but like, is there any way around just the fact that you have to watch every clip and cut it and like, no, a lot of people just kind of get turned off from the whole creative process because of the editing. It sounds like if you have a game plan going into it, you can Helps out a lot. significantly cut down what you're shooting. Editing. A lot of the times I never publish stuff that I shoot on my phone cause I just shot too much, you know? Yeah. So I just, ah, screw it. I'm just never going to publish anything. <laughs> no. And it, that's the hardest thing. Like yeah. going into it, that's why I think having a game plan, yeah. having intention before you go into it helps you not overshoot. Um, it does help to have more footage, but to a point, like if you have way too much, it's just like, it becomes overwhelming mm-hmm. or time inefficient mm-hmm. to go through. I think having systems for when you actually bring everything into the editing room to be able to quickly go through and make selects is huge. Like I typically am watching everything at like two or four times speed back. If it's not audio. Are you using Adobe? Are you using DaVinci? What's I use DaVinci for DaVinci? everything, but it's okay. like, I have the same shortcuts for Premiere, Final Cut and DaVinci. I've Great. used all three of them nice. throughout the years. Yeah. It's just like finding a way that goes through really quick. So like I have everything laid out on a master timeline that I never, I don't cut anything out of that. Like everything stays on there and do one quick, like one run through of that, lift up everything that's mm-hmm. usable, duplicate that timeline, delete the bot- bottom layer, then I have a selects one. And mm-hmm. then it's like, okay, this is all of the usable footage. Then go through that typically one or two more times, make tighter and tighter selects. And then ideally when you're editing, you're only using that final bit. So mm-hmm. you have a lot of upfront time put in to go through everything. But then when you're actually editing, you're like, oh, I know all of the clips. That so are you're there. not worried about organizing and sequence and structure until you've already clipped it until it's like, yeah, it depends less, on like the video too. Yeah, like yeah. a lot of like my short form content, I have them like fully scripted out. I'm like, yeah, either I will do the talking bits and then I'll create a B roll sequence before that, or I'll have it scripted out where it's like the outline is like, this is the beginning. This is the end. This is the shots that I want for that. And yeah. then you can have everything laid out for that. Biggest mistake you've ever made in business? Spending so much time on like things that don't actually move the needle forward. Mm. It's so easy to get caught up in running the, like doing the things that make the business go forward. So Mm. as far as like video production goes, spending all of your time editing or probably, I mean, shooting usually has a finite time. So you're not going to spend all your time shooting, but like spending all of your time editing or like inefficiently editing Mm -hmm. when you're not like, you could be getting new clients or doing so many other things. Right. So I say just like spending your time in things that aren't actually productive. That's a piece of content I saw being productive versus being busy. Yeah. is kind of that topic. Right. And Chase Jarvis talks really nicely about, uh, there's like a quadrant of actions where it's like urgency versus, uh, Oh yeah. It's like uh, basically like Eisenhower the that, principle or something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Eisenhower. It's exactly yeah. it. And I'm butchering it, but basically like the stuff that it's importance versus urgency are the two axes. Yeah. And so in your mind, at least this is the trap that I've fallen into. There's always going to be work that is urgent and either important or not important, but mm-hmm. urgent. Uh, but the stuff that's, important but not urgent is the stuff that like oh yeah you're talking about like business development new clients updating your website like these things that you just can keep putting off oh my gosh and but then you're running in place and then all the work you're doing is not optimal optimal and being leveraged yeah so this has been a huge shift for me in like the last like three months and this is after a year and a half of running my business and being like 
making some progress, but not making the progress that I want is like how much of your time, like really doing a time audit and like, mm. where is all my time being spent and seeing like, okay, this is how much time is being spent on X, Y, and Z, but going into each week or each day being like, all right, these are the things that are actually going to move the needle forward in whatever I'm doing. So whether that's like having a system where you're like how you onboard your clients, like having that dialed. So you don't need to think about it again. You spend all this time up front. So then you're like, oh, everything's dialed. The client experience is awesome. Send them a one pager. What does that look like? For me, I have a Notion dashboard that I okay send to them. Like I have like an email. I kind of bring them into Notion. Bring them into Notion. Yep. That's where all of the communication is. Yep. So everything like emails can get really messy. Yep. So like having oh. one thing where it's like they now have a full timeline of each project where everything is. I have these little like talking head videos that explain how to use everything, like the entire process mm-hmm. of like us starting to work together through where their final product is. Wow. Like wow. it's all easy and laid out. So they can, see, okay. So that's very cool. Do you but, have, yeah, yeah. Like I think it all, it's all like having these systems and like figuring out, okay, I can easily fill up my day with tasks and be busy. But at the end of the day, it's like, it doesn't matter, especially when you're running your own business, it doesn't matter how busy you are. It's like, okay, what's, what do you have to show for it at the end of the week or end of the day? So I have like at the beginning of the week, I'm like, okay, these are the three, one or three tasks that I want to get done for the week. And then each day it's like, okay, this is the one thing that I need to get done today. Mm -hmm. If I don't get that done, then the today is kind of a waste. Yeah. Yeah. So like like spending usually the morning, like get that one thing done. Cause until that's done, everything else is just procrastination. Mm -hmm. Like really hone that in. So for me, like this last week has been fun creating content, like making sure I have the content for the whole week. Okay. So maybe I'll be like, out. like tomorrow it's going to be like script out seven videos and ideally shoot a lot of them. And then the next day is going to be like editing and shooting them. Epic. Yeah. Epic man. Well, I'm, I'm uh, very excited for where you're going to take this thing. Um, by the way, your business is called North Cascades films, North Cascade films, North Cascade films. Why, why North Cascade? Where it all started, really. Not in the North Cascades, but in the mountains, uh-huh. for sure. Uh-huh. Um, that's like, literally like changed my life. I went out to the mountains for the first time in like 2011 from the Midwest, from Wisconsin. Went out to the mountains, blew my mind, changed the trajectory of my life. Went, became a mountain guide in, I guess this would be the Southern Cascades, um, would be like Mount Shasta. Mm-hmm. And then got into film and the first place I worked in film was the North Cascades and just absolutely love it up here. Like it's kind of where it all started was in the mountains. So very cool, man. That's uh, the North Cascades low key. We got three great national parks here in Washington, but so good. North Cascades national park is the sleeper. It's the mm-hmm. one that people overlook. They'll go to Mount Rainier. They'll go to uh, Olympic, North Cascades is just as incredible, if not more so. It's mind, it's, it's mind blowing. I just went up there a couple of weeks ago, um, did some mountain biking out in this place called Sun Top Mountains. So uh, good. You've yeah. ridden out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I did the hike, uh, Heather Maple Loop, just the classic. Yeah. Just, I hadn't been up there in a long time. I've also ridden on the road um, yeah. over to Mazama and back. But dude, it is something special up there. We're very, mm-hmm. very blessed to have it. Um, where can people find you, follow you, stay in touch? Uh, yeah. if they want to hire you, um, you know, how, how to get in touch. Yeah. Um, Kobe at North cascade films.com is the email yep. uh, for business related stuff. And Kobe Crumholz at for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, any of that. Okay. So Instagram yeah. and TikTok. And yeah. You, I mean, pretty much Instagram is the main one. Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool, man. Kobe. This has been awesome. Any final thoughts um, as we wrap up here? Yeah, I think just jump in and go for it for whatever you're doing. Dude, thank you very much. Thanks for coming and sharing the wisdom. Um, Looking forward to following along and seeing what you do with all this. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, man. Good stuff, dude. Awesome.